This is the Finesse Media Podcast. Welcome back to the Finesse Media Podcast Season 6. And joining us again, we haven't seen him since Season 3, Derek Monroe. Let's get this thing rolling, and I'm so excited. We're back with another episode of the Finesse Media Podcast, Season 6, and I'm your host, Ken Finesse Media. And as I mentioned to you last week and each and every week, I'm bringing you something brand new. And this week, I don't really have someone brand new. If you've seen Season 3 and you've been keeping up with the Finesse Media Podcast, he's back to join us for season six welcome back to the podcast there's a couple new layers that he has that i want to talk to him about because last time he came on i introduced him as a three-time emmy nominated artist but this guy is now a five-time uh emmy nominated artist also added to it naacp nominated so listen this guy is doing his thing he's a brother that's finessing the game you can catch him if you see the view you may see him there but if not you see the beautiful ladies that he present to you each and every daily monday through friday on the view welcome to the podcast back again hurt virginia's own welcome back bro Derek moreau what's up man what's up ken it's so good to be back thank you for having me again (laughs) <laughs> yeah, welcome back, man. It's, you know what? I was looking at the date, Derek, and I had realized when I was actually watching season three, I go, whoa, this was 2020. We were in the freaking pandemic. So, yeah. again, thank you for joining me because, again, in the pandemic, I mean, where were you really going? <laughs> Everyone's inside. But you still yeah. know we're busy, but you had time. So, four years ago, Derek, just really quick, what's been up with you? I got a couple things I've noticed that's been up with you, but since 2020, man, what's been up with you? Um, a lot of the same, but a lot is different, I guess. I mean, you know, how you me, feel since the pandemic? I'll, I'll, I'll tailor or alter my question then. Okay. How do you feel since 2020? How does it feel? I want to go back inside. I was, you know what? Um, <laughs> I was not one of those people that was mad at the pandemic. I mean, yeah, of course, yeah. the deaths and the sickness was a horrible, but. I took advantage of it because I've been working since I was 16 years old. So um, I actually like 14. I was a I was a shampoo boy. But I also (laughs) I I, one of those people that I've worked since I was young. There was never a time that I did not work. So that was the first time in life where I could just chill and not have to worry about going to work. And. I'm one of those people that I pay it. I mean, it's not a good thing, but I am doing that. Like, well, they work it. Like, I'm not one of those people. I, I'm getting there as I get older, but I am one of those people that feel like if you're working really hard and I'm not, then I feel like I'm I'm losing out on something. So I feel like, no, no, I got to get up. I got to work too. <laughs> so the pandemic allowed me not to have to feel that because nobody was going anywhere. So it yeah. gave me another level of peace to not just only rest, but rest in the fact that I was resting and not yeah. feel like I was not accomplishing and, and being left behind in some kind of way. So that was one of the aspects, but as far as like what's going on and what's changed, um, a lot of the same, but just at different levels, you know, yeah. um, thankfully I did get a chance to, uh, I did since then the Emmys so much, aren't so much. I did get not, we did get nominated a few more times, like twice, but, um, the NAACP image award nomination yeah. was something different for me. Because I I got nominated for Teal. Whoopi did Teal. It was a passion project of hers. The shit worked since I'd known her. She was trying to get this movie made. She was trying to get it made while Mamie Teal was alive. And it just didn't happen with the writers and everything. And um, just trying to get funding. You know, it's very yeah. hard. A lot of people in, in the business think, well, she's Whoopi Goldberg. And just stuff just happens because they know her accolades. And that's how we view her in the black community, like, oh, well, she's who she is. She's an right. he got he got it should be easy, but it's not. It's really hard. I always say this. I have a new respect for black women and especially black women in the industry, because mm-hmm. no matter how many accolades or how many awards or what strides you make, people are always going to try to reduce you to nothing. So I definitely, you know, um, was happy to do received that award nomination for that movie because I know how much she had worked hard for it. But it was also 
an acknowledgement of your peers as black people just coming off the NAACP awards from last week. I didn't go, but it is something about being recognized by your own. Yeah. And even the way we celebrate, you know, when you get an, when you get nominated for an Emmy, it's a very empty sort of feeling besides just the actual nomination. When it happens, you don't really even get a chance to really take it in, you know, um, because you, the way they do their ceremony, it's mm -hmm. like people get called out on their ceremony and then they just take them out. Like, because it's not televised. There's I was no going to say some of those categories aren't even televised. No. And so it's no decorum to it. So literally when you're in there, if they call your category and let's say your category is the last category, the room is darn near empty by the time um, people have left because it's like 40 something categories. So by the time they call your category, people have gotten up and left, especially if you're losing. Why are you going to just sit there? So people yeah. get up and they leave. And so there's no fanfare around it. For the NAACP Awards, they make it such an event um, that even if you're just partying and just having a good time, it's it's worth being there. So that was an experience for me. Um, yeah. And um, yeah. otherwise, too, I, I, well, I'll let you ask more. Questions. I don't know if I'm just, <laughs> I don't want to. I say, wait, don't steal my thunder because what he's also doing, which forgive me, I was remiss to also mention. Um, podcast. Talk. I don't even know if I should call this thing a podcast. Let me be respectful because what I do is this podcast. Behind the scenes beauty is continuing to kick ass. When I was a young hairstylist, there was no information on how to be a part of the entertainment world that I was so in love with. Growing up, I watched shows like VH1's Behind the Music and Lifetime's Intimate Portrait that gave some insight to at least what a world in entertainment looked like. Thankfully, I learned how to navigate and find my own way in the industry. But I also wanted to figure out how to share that and how I could shine a light on black creatives in the industry. Yes. You're continuing, oh. and I've said this to you offline in the DMs on your guests who you had. Dude, you are support. continuing to grow this as a host. So I was remiss to give you that that title as well as 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 a talk show host. Or, or what do you call it? What do you, do you respect it as I, a podcast? I do. Res I don't call it. What do you it a call podcast. it? It's a show. I don't call it a podcast because it's not on any not. kind of podcast platform. I probably need to sidebar with you on how to make that happen. But it's not on any podcast. It's just strictly on YouTube. I don't even like to call it a YouTube show. I've gotten yeah. into this space where I like to call it a YouTube series. Yeah. Um, it's the same thing, but it's just something I like better about series. But um, it's so good. Yeah. Y'all, listen. Listen, y'all. Not right now. But once this conversation is over, make sure you go and check out Behind the Scenes Beauty on YouTube. I mean, since the pandemic... You continue to grow your brand and, and, and grow your audience even. And do I was watching recently with Melba Moore, like do yeah. the iconic. Now you don't see Melba Moore take a lot of interviews. She's highly active on social media, but you yeah. don't see her take a lot of interviews. And dude, I clicked the button one day and saw coming up next was Melba Moore. What was yeah. that experience like having that icon again? You're around legends often, <laughs> but Melba Moore, you had a sit down conversation with her. What was that experience like? That was an amazing experience. I mean, what's ironic is I had already spoken with her. I was in the gym one day. I think I commented. Yeah, how did that I, even happen? Yeah, I was in the gym. I think she commented, and I think I complimented her. And I think she came back with, like, here's my manager's. I was like, oh, I have to interview you. And she was like, here's my manager's number and sent it. This was definitely prior to the whole Cat Williams yeah. talking about her in his interview. Wow. For Club Shay Shay. So when that happened, it just felt like it was perfect timing to go ahead and have to sit down and talk with her, you know, to sort of delve into what was so important about her career that Kat felt the need to honor her. So um, I just reached out and she they were just like, yeah, let's make it happen. Her and um, her her man, her manager, who is great and just really made sure everything came together. Um, so sitting down and talking to her, I'm one of those people I'm always in awe because I do remember Melba growing up. Like yeah. she's not necessarily my um, age demographic, but I still remember seeing her in shows like mm -hmm. her own talk show, uh, her own um, television show, Melba, and all these different things. So she was so to see um, 
to hear her story and, and hear how she came out on the other side and, you know, yeah. how she went through abuse and how she, you know, lost everything and was homeless. So yeah. to see her thriving now and then feeling like she got a second win and her being excited about it, it was it was a great opportunity. And I yeah. really she appreciate it. She looked good, dude. And I, I think I've seen a clip where she's still performing. So yeah. she sounds good. The pitch is like spot on. It reminds yeah. me like this iconic tone of the songstress legendary Anita Baker, who's yeah. also on tour. And like these women just continue to, you know, give us these songs after years, after years. It still sounds so good doing it, man. Um, yeah. but again, I, I saw Mira Moore. I go, listen, who else is he going to have on after Mira Moore? Uh, but it was so much of a good conversation. What inspired you? I, I don't know if I asked you this before, but to our viewers who are going to check out behind the scenes, or frankly, those who are already watching, let's not take for granted that your audience aren't watching you right now and they right. love, you know, behind the scenes beauty. But what inspired you to create, you know, the whole uh, platform? Well, I always tell the story. Uh, when I when I was growing up, I I was because I was in this small town, when you have big dreams, you're trying to find these outlets that sort of gives you this insight of where you want to be, you know, mm -hmm. and how do you get there? And what are some of the things that you can experience? So I used to love watching behind the music. I'm not a part of music, but hey. I, I love the hearing the stories of entertainment. I grew up watching uh, Lifetime's Intimate Portrait, you know, where they would talk about different women's careers. So when it came to me and beauty, I wanted to sort of help and not just beauty, but just us within mm -hmm. the industry, mm -hmm. whatever facet, because on our show, we have hair, makeup, yeah. styling, fashion, music, everybody from Everything. all mediums. And so I just wanted for <clears throat> us to have some kind of reference points to be able to turn to so that you know you can hear the story so when you hear about you know um uh um oh my god why can't i even think like cynthia bailey as a model what she went through you know mm -hmm. when you hear about another great know, interview by the way people check it out thank you but yeah <laughs> and, like, you and know, she called herself at one point yeah go ahead i'm sorry yeah and like candy burris and what she went through with the industry and how mm -hmm. you know the group was doing good and then all of a sudden she had to fall back on the fact of being a writer because they still had record deals like these are the stories you hear mm -hmm. and i think a lot of times you can gauge where you are a little bit mm -hmm. like if you know that everything things not working out back then without you having this kind of knowledge Mm -hmm. You tend to sit there and think, well, I'm messing up or maybe I'm not going the right way. But I feel mm -hmm. like when you hear these stories and these testimonies mm -hmm. of people telling like, hey, you know, I went to do this. This didn't work out. This person did this to me. I lost this. It still gives you like, OK, I can keep going because clearly these people still made it regardless. So that's a lot of why what inspired me. And I hope that people are just encouraged. I, I feel like yeah. there's a lot of negative fighting kind of things out in the world. So I hope behind the scenes beauty puts a little bit of like encouragement as I do, it makes it a longer process and it's more expensive because it would be easier to just have a conversation like this and just put the conversation out and not have to edit it at any right. kind of way. But I feel like you have to come up with the ways that um, sets you apart from everybody else. And in this age and era where everyone is doing these platforms of talking, I mm -hmm. try to differentiate myself a little bit in a way by just helping to tell the story. So when you see, you know, a conversation with Lunel and you see Lunel as a little girl, it takes you down that yeah. road of what that little Lunel looked like. And, you know, when she talks about, uh, you know, working with like the different legends she's worked with i think being able to see that and hear mm -hmm. their interactions and everything it brings the story closer to home so i appreciate that more by doing it it takes me you don't even want to know we how know it takes me to literally, and i do <laughs> that myself like i literally go through oh you do i literally so my my editor sends me the video my videographer sends me the rough cut and then there i go I do a Dropbox paper document and I write down two minutes at two minutes and 37 seconds, a picture of little blue nail. And I comb the internet to see what I can find. Wow, Derek. Pictures, which is the best picture. Now, Derek, I end. do that. So I understand the work that's put in it. Let me just say, I totally understand. And 
respect your work ethic. But I'm well, gonna just say this, and not to too. respectfully, because I don't know your craft. <laughs> I literally thought Derek doing the interview, fantastic job. And no. I was gonna say, and I will still say, because I know you got makeup people, camera people. So shout out to your whole team. But the editing, I didn't think it was you. I thought that was you putting that in the best care of hands no. to make it come out the way it is. So that's you doing. First of all, I don't have a team. It's two <laughs> of us. It's the videographer and it's me. Wow. Well, shout and out to you, sir. <laughs> thank you. Your I, other person. Shout booking. out to you, sir. I do the booking. Now, if it's like a person like Melba, I brought Karen in to like help me. Like I have shout out to Karen DePeach. Morel, yeah, Morel Hollis and Karen DePeach. They're my good friends. So they'll jump in and be like, I got it and they won't charge me. I like for Melba, I'll do the hair. Or if it's to somebody, I'll do the hair. Um, but for the most part, it's it's me booking it. It's me booking the studios, paying for their rent. I try to make it as much like a real television situation because I realize at what level you start it mm -hmm. is the like the that's where you want you have to do it in the level of what you visualize it. So mm -hmm. I don't like to do you know it at a at a lower level. I want it to feel some kind of way, and I realize. The level of investment that you put into yourself is the only level that you can expect other people to put into you. Absolutely. And I look, I believe for the day that those million dollar deals are going to come. And that's mm -hmm. why I invest in myself that way, because mm -hmm. you can't do less than me. So when you yeah. come to me with a business deal, it's got to be at the level of what I do it for myself. So that's yeah, that's that's so thank you again for seeing that because it does. It's a lot of work that goes into it, but I think it just helps to tell the story. And I hope and I hope that it helps to differentiate me in this, you know, time where everybody. I think something. it has and I think it will continue. I want to ask you what's next for behind the scenes beauty and what where did you see this show going? I know that you want it to be. Well, let me ask you. Where do you see this show going? Where do you want this show to go? I want it to, I want this to be just a portion. I would love for it to become like, uh, I, I don't, to be honest, I can't even give you the fulfillment of what it is because in a way I'm still grasping at that. I do know I want it to be, have the feel of an allure magazine in, in, in digital form where mm -hmm. you can go there for your hair, your your hair, your makeup, your fashion, all that kind of stuff. But I feel like the interviews also help add a level of um, a level of the inside. I feel like all of that stuff covers the outside, but I feel like the interviews and those conversations will help to cover the inside and how you feel about yourself. Because I come away with, from each person a different testimony you know, or a different part portion mm -hmm. of life. My interview with Tamron Hall has been something that I've been leaning on here lately because Another she was one. talking about how she had to bet on herself. And at this particular point right now, this marks my fifth year doing behind the scenes beauty and I'm planning a brunch. Thank you. But Bravo. the level of where I want to plan the brunch is requiring me to do it in a way that I've never done. And, mm -hmm. and the, the budget is a, a budget that's way out of, what I couldn't just pay for on my own. So it's making me bet on myself. So mm -hmm. I'm having to then take those conversations and live them out in my regular life right now, um, which th is the only way God mm -hmm. does it. So, um, you know, you, you hear, you know, you hear the sermon and now you have to live it out. So now there you go. I'm, I'm betting on myself. And so hopefully you know, somebody in the digital space can say, hey, I really do see that you're trying to put out beautiful content, content that's encouraging, that ain't trying to tear people down. I don't yep. ever try. When I do my interviews, mm -hmm. even with um, when I did my uh, interview with Ebony K, K. Williams and she had been through that whole bus driver gate, mm -hmm. I in the conversation, I was not even going to bring that up. She was like, no, let's definitely talk about it. It's part of life. But I was like, I don't ever, and I, and this is probably to my detriment, I don't ever want to do something for clickbait. Like, I'm mm -hmm. never trying to get you to just click in to hear the dirty nasty. Mm -hmm. Like, no, I don't want to do that. Like, I really mm -hmm. genuinely want you to walk away and say, wow. Like, because I feel like my, my, my best interview, I feel like is Kenya Moore. Because really? Kenya Moore, I, well, I ain't going to say she's my best, but she's one of those that I feel like it brought back 
who Kenya was and who Kenya is. You know, before, you know. That's a Detroit was, girl. It's cold in yes. the D. Yeah. And I grew up on Kenya. Like, Kenya was one of those people that I remember when she won and being so excited about how this was a brown skin. And no disrespect to our light skin sisters, but she was brown skin. So it was undeniable that she wasn't a simulation and that she's the closest thing we can get. So we'll accept her. Mm -hmm. But she was clearly a brown skinned woman. And you had to respect that. Who and I love that about her. Who yeah. earned the title? The crown. Who earned the title? And then to, I, so from there, I used to watch her on in the house, like anything she was in. For some reason, I was so excited about. I had met her at the Atlanta Hair Show when she did the movie twice. She was signing autographs, and I remember looking in the top of her scalp to see if her hair was real. <laughs> so to go years later, I'm not going to ask you what was the answer for that, but go ahead. No, it was her hair. It, it was, was her, her hair. hair. <laughs> but to go years later. And to then be working with her and then to have the opportunity to sit down and do that interview and then to know how there might be a younger generation that know her as the housewife, but fail mm -hmm. to realize this whole moment. If you go under the comments of that interview, every comment in that interview is like, this is the Kenya we wish everyone else would. You and Whoopi doing this challenge, dude. How in the heck, and Cameron DePeach, how in the heck did you guys get her to join in on this challenge? And what was that all about? First of all, she got us to join in on the no challenge. No kidding. She, she sent that to us in a text message. And she said, we have to learn this. And <laughs> literally, I think we came into work and I, I asked Karen, I was like, did you learn it? She's like, that no. thing went viral, dude. It was everywhere. We are almost <laughs> at 4 million views. <laughs> no kidding. I, can I tell you, I we did the Beyonce Cuff It Challenge, and it did a million views on my YouTube, but it only did like 589,000 views on my Instagram. Okay. On this one, the Big God Challenge, we're at almost 3.8 something million, 3.8 million followers, I mean, views right now. I've gained over... 40,000 followers. Wow. Wow. Just from the, and they're all Kenyan. I mean, not, uh, Nigerians. Wow. No, and they they're love it. They were eating it up. I'm sure they were eating it up, man. I was looking at this thing. I say, wait, look at whoops. Look at whoops. And then I see your whoops. silly self. But I'm oftentimes seeing you. Y'all follow Derek McBro. You'll see him. He'd be in makeup, dancing. They have you having a good time. So yeah. I'm used to seeing you act a fool in the best yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, I know. So you and Karen. And, and 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 whoop! I say, man, how did you get her? And I didn't know that she did the, you know, Beyonce challenge, the Cuffit challenge. So had I known, I go, okay, this was to be expected. I take Whoopi so serious sometimes, dude. I don't even think she likes to have a whole lot of fun. But I see you guys on vacations and things of that sort. So I said, wait, I think she has a little fun. But I didn't never think in a million years or thought that she'll do this challenge. <laughs> no, no, no. Whoopi is. Let me tell you, and I. I saying is Whoopi has really become like family to me family. which is very much so not my I'm not that person um I, I my friend Marcia the same one she, when I first started out in the industry she always was one of those people that said listen these people are not your friends people your clients the people that you work with they're your because the, you always want to make sure that you keep a complete line, you know, mm -hmm. Whoopi made that hard for me. And um, she's really, she, she just 
got over into being family and she, you know, invited us on on vacation and stuff. So when it even came to this, like I said, it was her idea. She was like, hey, let's do the challenge. We got to work one day and we just started practicing and we said, well, let's just see, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and and it came together. And I'm going to be honest, when we posted it, I thought, like I said, I thought maybe hmm, yeah. a good little 30,000 yeah. likes. Maybe. And <laughs> that was four gonna be, million. And that was going to be popping, right? Four yeah. million. Like when I tell you, <laughs> I, I've never, well, you know, it was, it was like, ching, 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 ching. It was crazy. Wrong. Literally. And I mean, even still to this day, like every day, my, my, like, you know, when you go to just check mm-hmm. your activity, it's just mm-hmm. follow, 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 follow. It, it has now started to wane a little bit, but it, at, at that time, like it was, they were, those people were just coming in all day you know, long and, just the all day long. And, and the comments. And yeah, so it's crazy. And Whoopi does love to have fun. We've even told her like, people need to see these sides of you. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. we're really going to try to move her social media and put her more in that space. So people <laughs> see, you know, it, it, the show makes her be serious. So yeah. you don't, she don't really get an opportunity. It's not what it used to be. They move more in the political realm, but you know, um, the real whoopee is like, love to have fun, love to tell yeah. jokes, you know, and have a good time. So yes. Yeah. Speaking of whoopee, we're going to go right into the view. Dude, I'm checking my clock in 2020. You have been at the view for a couple of years. So how long has it been since you've been a hairstylist, makeup artist on the view? This month, May, March, May, uh, actual eight years. Good dog. Good dog, yeah. man. Yeah. And some say it's a great place to work. I started in 2016. Work. Wow. Wow. What a long time, man. What do you love most about being there? Because you really get to, look? you really get to kind of just with the ladies, you know, the, the show hosts. But when guests come in, you get to see them some, you get to make up. So outside of, you know, just the whole show itself, what do you love most about the show working there? I have to, okay, I have to admit it's a very blessed job to have. It's um, it's blessed because, first of all, you don't work all day. We're a live show. So most of the time at noon, we're done. You know, when they mm-hmm. say take a little time to enjoy the view, we everybody walks out the building. Well, not the producers because they got to produce next day's show. But the rest of us, the cat, the host and us, we're out. Um, so that's the first part. It's it's flexible um, and they're flexible. So I just want to say some days of Whoopi's hair is off. I'm not there that day. Sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> I saw you showing us the other day, and, and I'm showing it now how you were, you know, twisting the oh, hairstyles yeah, up. Yeah, how some people don't up. see yeah. that, man. Yeah, but sometimes I'm not there. Like, like, like last week I was working with Angela Bassett, so I, I took off, and I would be looking, I'd be like, oh, I can tell I'm not there. <laughs> but, wow. but because Whoopi's the type, she don't let nobody. She's she's very sensitive about the people around her, so she don't just let anybody do her hair. Um, so that's one thing. Um, but it's also, like you said, it's the people and it's not, I mean, celebrities now I've been, I've been in the industry for a long time. So I don't really know if it's too many celebrities that I ever get too excited about. But what I will say is I, I do appreciate meeting these, um, historical people. Like that I will always treasure the fact that I was able to meet John Lewis, you know, being at that show. I will always that's my brother John Lewis, rest in peace. Yes, and he's getting into some good trouble. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Kobe Bryant, you know, when wow. he passed, I was like, wow, I had that quick opportunity to like meet mm-hmm. him, you know, and, and then there are some life-changing moments that have also been a part of it's a young man. His name is Israel. He was on the show. His mom was shot in Florida mm. by the racist woman. At She shot him in front of her son. I and remember the, that story. I don't know if you heard about this news mm-hmm, story. but mm-hmm. She um, threw the so, iPad or something like that yep. or another. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Very unfortunate so, situation. Very unfortunate. But you get a, a chance to be part of these headline stories Mm -hmm. and to see the people Mm. in person is is a whole nother thing i i remember when philando castile got murdered and literally that week his uh i can't remember if she was his fiance or wife i think she was yeah yeah and his daughter Mm -hmm. when i tell you 
the daughter was with the mother when she came to talk about it and they showed his picture on the monitor in the back and she said is that there, there goes my daddy mm. and mm. so you know you're you're although it's the pageantry the celebrity mm -hmm. and stuff but to also be have an opportunity to connect with these people and the day that the young man Israel came to the show, you would have thought I was at Dr. King's funeral or something. Mm. When I tell you <laughs> I cried and bawled and everybody was trying to, the people, even one of the people that was a counselor, because the reason why he was on the show that day was because they were sending him to a grief camp. And beautiful, um, beautiful. Sarah had really worked hard into trying to make sure that he gets in this grief camp because, you know, it's so he could process this. And it's a, with a camp with other kids that have lost mm -hmm. parents where they can learn to lean on each other. So That's beautiful. It was a beautiful thing. And just seeing him, oh, my God, can I bawled the whole day. I mean, even to this day. Yeah. Come to find out, the boy is 11 years old. He loves the Temptations. Wow. Loves the Temptations. My, one of my best friends, Juwan Jackson, is a Temptation. He he's, he sings the deep part. The Melvin wow. Williams. Wow, wow. Now, he's the new Melvin Williams. And so he um, is, is, is not Williams, it's Melvin Franklin, sorry. But he, he's the new Melvin Franklin. I tell the little boy, I'm like, yo, my friend is a team. He was like, oh, he's the new Melvin? But I tell you, he knew the whole <laughs> He history. knew it. He knew the whole history of the Temptations. I was able to call Juwan, and I was like, Juwan, whenever they come to Florida, you got to have. So they had the little boy on last week. They had the little boy, the boy's grandmother. Everybody yeah. got to go and see the Temptations. You got to meet Otis. He got The little boy was asking about Otis's first wife. Like wow. that's, he knew everything. Eleven years old. Like, he's been here before. He he was you know, and he was the type of child that you just wanted to just like. Mm. I, I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. So, yeah. so when you say when you're going back to the original question, when you ask me about what's it like to work there, it's a privilege, you know. Yeah. And when you think about all the places that you could be, it's an honor to be able to be at a place where you get to touch so part so much part of culture. Not just mm -hmm. pop culture, but culture in general. Yeah, yeah. Because nothing moves without going through the view, right? It's like if well, it's I, I don't know. <laughs> it, it we'll move on. View, <laughs> no, the view is a, is a, is a space where, uh, for sure, if you're there, uh, you you're, you're talking about something of relevance, uh, and yeah. it's really, uh I've been watching the view since day one, dude. Like since yeah. day one. So uh, shout out to Joy, who's a legend there. But I've been watching it from. It's also been on behind the scenes, beauty. She <laughs> has, she has, she has. Check that episode. I love Joy. Joy says exactly what she means. She's a Libra like Sunny, so I love them both. Between her and yeah. Sunny, yeah, look, I just get everything I love when I watch them because they just say it like they mean it, and I love it. But the inspiration again that you get from the show is kind of a nice segue to my next question because I want to know what is not what inspired you, but what's your experience as a host, as as a, what's your experience as a host and as producer, and what advice would you give? any inspiring content creators that's looking to break into the industry and sort of carve their niche. So what advice or inspiration would you give someone? Everything you need, God has already given it to you. That's it. That's the first one. Um, <clears throat> um, just be you. I've learned that I don't try to pattern myself after anybody. And I think that well, I'm a comment reader. You know how everybody say don't read mm -hmm. your comments? Mm -hmm. I read my comments because mm -hmm. I, I want to know. And, it's helpful. And, it's helpful. Yeah, it's, it's definitely helpful. And when I read the comments, is people are like, oh, he gives people chance to speak. He get, You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I take it, you know, and I use it to better myself. Um, and I, I also say, you know, um, do it fearlessly. Like there's never ever gonna be, and this is this is a piece of advice that can apply to anything that you're doing in life, whether it's content creating or anything. There's never ever gonna be a right time. Ken, you know this. There's, mm -hmm. you know, even for you tonight, like you having to get your kids together and all this, it's always gonna be a reason why you could not or why you should do it later. Always. Mm -hmm. There's always gonna be. There's never always going to be a, enough money. There's not always gonna be enough support. A lot of people that believe in you. But you have to believe in yourself and you just have to do it. What I realize is 
one thing about my life is I've lost a lot of people in my life. Like death has been a huge part of my life of losing people and losing people early in life too. Like at young ages, my mom was probably in her forties when she passed, you know, I had a cousin mm -hmm. that died of 21 of cancer. So I, I, I told a, a friend of mine, I said, you do a disservice to the people that you've lost in your life when you don't live. And you, when you don't go after these opportunities that you're so blessed to still have the opportunities to, to, to take advantage of. And so, you know, so what if you fail? But yeah. you really probably won't, you know. And even if even if it didn't work out like you planned, that's still not failure. That's a whole nother experience. And that's the beauty of this life. Mm. It's about the experience. And that's even what behind the scenes beauty is about. It's not so much about what your accomplishments was. It was the experience and the yeah. journey that got you there because those are really the beautiful things that make up the whole experience. So, yeah, yeah, that, uh, you you already have everything you need. When I started Behind the Scenes Beauty, I had to go within and what do I have? I have a network of people. You know what I'm saying? If you are a fashion blogger, you already have some type of fashion sense. You have a, you know, you, you have the things already. You just have to use them. Yeah. I always say to people when they say knowledge is power, I go, not until it's applied. Because exactly. knowledge is power, right? But if it's not applied, then there's no power, right? Because exactly. electricity is on, but if you don't plug it in, it would never come on. So apply, exactly. it, apply it, right? So if you have the knowledge, yep. I love that, Derek. Thank you so much for sharing that with our audience and hopefully someone me <laughs> take it in and run with it and so before i get you up out of here i got a couple more questions and i think no you're fine i i enjoy talking to you ken you, you're really good at this yeah but you understand that we edit these shows so we ain't gonna talk all night <laughs> no it's fine <laughs> i'm it's messing fine. with you bro but i do want to continue on with kind of a flip side of that question why you inspire someone each and every week on the finesse media podcast this has probably been the legendary question since season one and i know i ask you this same question in season three but i want to know who it is now and if it's the same person and you can share it. But each and every week, Derek, on the Finesse Media Podcast, I ask my finesser, that's you, someone that's finessing the game, that's incredibly excelling in their work of art. So again, thank you for joining this podcast as a returning finesser, right? But who's that person for you, Derek? Who's that person that you say or that comes to mind that's finessing the game? Who do you say? Who I say is finessing the game. Um, you know what, to be honest... At this present point, I'm going to have to say Whoopi, and that feels like a cop-out answer because I'm sure there's someone else that's definitely closer. But when, I mean, not closer, but someone else I probably could say. But I'll say Whoopi just because, you know, there's, in where I am now with projects that I want to do, I see her in those same projects. Like I was telling you, Teal, the work that it goes into trying to make that happen. Now with her, she's moved. She got that accomplished. And now there's Sister Act. And then mm -hmm. trying to get that moving, the things and the obstacles and the this and the this. And it's very easy to just say, I, I give up. But she constantly, because she sees the vision of what it can be and what she wants it to be. Mm -hmm. So you keep going. So she probably don't know it because we don't, I don't, this is probably not something I sit in and just tell her. You know, because mm -hmm. I guess at the same time, I don't really think about it. But, um, well, I do think about it. I guess I just don't, I don't know. But anyway, that would probably be it for me right now. And then, like I said, because, two, she's been through a lot. Like, I've never been with her through a lot of the stuff she's been through. Like, you know, from scandals or just different things that happen. But, we'll, you know, in past times, seeing how she handled uh you know, when people were trying to say she was anti-Semitic, which is not crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah. But to see her grace about it when because I'm devastated, like I didn't realize, like, you know, I, I think when it first happened, I was like, OK, but when I when it happened, I just remember thinking, oh, my God, like, you know, and I remember just reaching out and she was like, baby, I, you know, I didn't I didn't been here before. Mm -hmm. So where I'm just sitting here ready to jump out. Right. And, you know, <laughs> Ring the alarm. Like, Girl, come on. Look, come on. <laughs> they is we trying got, to d d we gotta respond. By you. Yeah. She was, just, she was calm and steady. I mean, hurt. Definitely hurt. But realizing that she'll get through this just like anything else. And so, you know, it's so she's probably one of the people that's finessing the game. And like I said, and, and to be 
a person that has accomplished so much but still mm -hmm. be underestimated. Yeah, that's and still hard. And still doing it with this upcoming book, uh, what is bits and pieces? My mother and brother and me is coming out May 7th, 2024. I had another book uh called Is It Just Me? which I read cover to cover back when I was living in Chicago because a lot of the things that she was talking about in the book, like children screaming on the plane, people doing weird things on the bus, like is it just me? And I'm like, No, well, I'm reading the pages, like, no, it's right. not no, nope. so with her bits and pieces coming up May 7th, another novel, like you said, she's continuing to do the work uh, he got you think emmy grammy oscar tony on the show for about a decade and just continuing to be loved by her peers she can really rest gracefully on her throne but she is continuing to just do it so i don't disagree i am in alignment with that same finesse i truly believe whoopi is finessing the game she's on my bucket list of one of the people to meet it's her and pay Bell, and i'm like i don't want to have to kick the bucket to meet these women but i'm like no 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 god you gotta take me on out of here to meet whoops let's go ahead and <laughs> make no, no 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 we we're gonna, we're gonna hopefully we'll make it on your trip to new york maybe that we'll make that hopefully happen. hopefully dude whoopi is yeah. certainly someone Who's and Patty's today. amazing too. Thankfully, I met Patty, Patty too. Patty's Patty. amazing too. Such I, a sweet I, spirit. And Patty, because she's been. Have you met Patty outside the show or through the view? Patty is. Good. I met Patty. I, I met Patty ahead. through the view. I met. Same Patty. Yeah, that Let's go ahead and move right on past that man. Yeah. But listen, I am having some fun with my guest still this season. I I started maybe last season where I'm picking through your social media pages because you got Instagram, Twitter. You don't just have one, so I'm going through all of it. I'm trying to figure out what was this photo or this video or maybe if it was a Facebook post. What was this status about? So I've been having a ton of fun with my guests by doing this. And Derek, let me tell you. I was thumbing through your Instagram, okay, and I seen right. this photo, and okay. I said, what the hell going on with these people? Well, not what the hell going on with these people, but where were y'all? How did these people hook up? Maybe I'm okay. giving too much, because I usually don't give that much detail. I just usually say, I found something, and I'm going to show it to you. But okay. I got to give you a little bit of a prelude. I was like, where? Tell our viewers, Derek. What was going on in this photo that I found on your Instagram page? You ready? I'm ready. Yeah, I Stephen, like one ain't know about this part. No. I like this. I like this segment. This <laughs> Let's have some fun before I get you up out of here. Derek, what was y'all, what was y'all doing? Oh, okay. <laughs> Me, Lou Nail, and Bebby. Lou okay. Nail, Bebby Smith, and the Derek Monroe. Okay. And what's crazy is the status doesn't give much away. Just say, I'm sitting at home in the bed watching TV. Uh huh. Dot, dot, dot. What? That's tell, literally please. what happened. Let me tell you. <laughs> I was sitting at home. That's that's the that's the beauty of I will say of like that my word life. beauty. We probably titled this episode beauty. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're gonna call it. But that is the funny thing about my life is because it's always been like I'll I'll never forget. When I lived in LA, I was I was sitting at home and one day and it was like, oh, we're getting ready to go to a Lisa Ray party. It was like birthday party. I was like, what? Like I remember jumping up getting dressed because that was not my plan to do. So that was, again, here's another moment. I'm sitting at home. I didn't took my clothes off. I'm getting ready to go to bed, wash my face, and put my pimple cream on. And all <laughs> of a sudden, what had happened was I had I was while I was sitting here at home. Do you know who um, Eating Good with Freddie Jean is? Mm -mm, not from. Oh the my name. God! You don't know who Freddie Jean is? Okay, Freddie so Miss Freddie Jean is. When you get off of this podcast, you have to go to YouTube. I mean, to Instagram and find Miss Freddie Jean. Miss Freddie Jean is this older lady that makes these different foods, and she talks about mm -mm, eating good with okay. Freddie Jean. So, but the thing about it is, a lot of times I have seen not... her little short, light skinned lady with glasses. Yes, yeah, it never looks appetizing, but she swear it does. And it, it'll be, it should be like a vegan option. It'll be lettuce and tomato laid on the plate. <laughs> <laughs> like that's not, I mean, that's, I guess that is Miss Freddie G, but whatever. Anyway, Miss Freddie G here went live, and I, me, and Bevy love Freddie G. Bevy is one of my great, great friends, and Shout Bevy, Bevy Smith. is like my neighbor. Bevy lives like five blocks from me. So I had called Bevy to tell her that I had went on live with Miss Freddie G because she was doing the live. 
Bevy didn't call me back. She didn't answer. She calls me back and she says, what are you doing? And I was like, nothing. I said, what are you doing? She said, I just finished having dinner with Lunell and we're on our way to this place <laughs> called 67 Orange here in Harlem. And she was like, you should come. You should come. You need to have her on your show. And I was like, <laughs> you're right. I do need to have her on the show, my show. So that means I need to get up and put my clothes back on and come back out. And so literally... <laughs> I jump. She said, "Okay, well, come now. We on our way." And I literally jump up. I get dressed, and I get there. They have been well. Yeah, they have been drinking. Lunel was feeling good, and it was just so funny. But we went down there. We made the connection. Uh, she was here for that week that she did Broadway, and she. What was funny is she was like, "I really would love to meet Whoopi," and I said, "You know what? I can make that happen." I Wait, I fixed- saw that post. You were yeah. to connect the dot. Yeah, of course. Look at God. Look at God. Yeah. Wow. So she, now I saw that post. We did, and she came to the show, and then she came and did my show after that. So she Whoa. came to the view. She had a. She said, "I have Wednesday free," and she said, "I can do your show right after." So she literally another came dope to the ass view. broad. I'm gonna tell you, y'all. Lunell is who she is. She That's is. dope, bro. Wow. She is. She is a sweetheart. I. I. It's so crazy. I tell her. We have a love affair. We had this whirlwind love affair because literally we met each other and we became like tight as glue from that. Like we call, she'll send me voice messages randomly. <laughs> Derek, look, I'm sitting here. I'm coming to New York. <laughs> like, you know. So I love El Murder. Yeah, baby. So, so yeah, El Murder. So yeah, that that's what that was about. We randomly had a cool, cute night. And the beautiful thing is it was like a speakeasy. So it was they put us downstairs just to ourselves. And I got to meet her daughter and all her family was with her. So it was a great time. Shout out to Danielle, yeah. who's a sweet, sweet girl, yes. just like her mom. Incredible dancer, too. Uh, she yes. is. Danielle, she is, is super cool. And shout out to Lunel Wright, because she was on Broadway, uh, Chicago. On Chicago, yeah. I love Lunel that, because that's my city right here. Well, Listen, you listen, you got a So it's my city. You see, I got the Cubs going on. So no, I love that for her. Yeah, it was it was dope. And, and then the thing about it is, from that, her and Whoopi connected. She then came and did a show in New Jersey and um with uh Bill Bellamy and um some di- uh earthquake and different was it earthquake? No, it might not have been earthquake, but anyway, different comedians. For a Valentine's Day thing, and me, Whoopi, Sher- Shepherd, we all, all of us went to go support her. So it was a great time. Another sweetheart, Sherry Shepherd, who, by the way, just came on my screen as well, uh, but who's kicking ass. But listen, that's what I found on your social media page. And I said, let me ask him, what's going on? Because this caption was, I was at home watching TV, dot, dot, dot. And I'm like, wait. Tell me more. What's I love this. On? Can I tell you I love this segment? I'm like, ooh, can I steal this segment? You can, everyone. If I you can't, I use can't. it, please. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. It's, but it's beautiful. That's a cute little segment. I found this one. I like that. What you can do, Derek, for those that are now um, knowing all about you and, and want to continue to support you, I know I have it down at the bottom, but for those who can't read or who's in another room changing diapers or doing whatever they're doing, let people know how they can support your brand and follow you, man, and keep up with everything that you have going on. Listen, you can go to YouTube and please subscribe. Don't just watch the interviews, but make sure you subscribe. So that way, whenever I drop a new interview, you are alerted and you can go right to Behind the Scenes Beauty with Derek Monroe or just type in my name, Derek Monroe, and I'll come right up. Also, you can follow me on Instagram, Derek Monroe. My name is spelled D-E-R-I-C-K. A lot of people be trying to make it double R's or D-E-R-E-K, but no, it's just D-E-R-I-C-K, M-O-N-R-O-E, one word. And yeah. You can find me on all social platforms. Derek Monroe. I don't really man. do a lot on the TikTok. I'm on there, <laughs> but I don't really, so don't really, but just Instagram and YouTube, them, them my joints. I do I be should. on Facebook, but not really. And make sure y'all subscribe again, as he said. Don't just watch, don't just comment, share it. Comment, yes, but also subscribe because one thing about it is when he dropped those new episodes, you want to set that reminder. And so when it comes on your screen, your telephone, however you view your your shows on YouTube, you want to certainly watch it, man. Derek, thank you so much for, again, taking the time out uh, to speak with me again. Come back and and keep me updated. You got to come back. I have so much fun. Listen, listen. 
I don't want to be that person, but I feel like I need to be a repeat guest all the time. Cause I hey, let's so do it. Really let's do it. You come back with Whoopi, and we'll do it all day long. Listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, Derek, again, thank you, man. You're a good brother. You're certainly someone who's finessing the game. I revere you, my dude. And all the you way from Hurt, right Virginia, all the way from Hurt, Virginia, now holding it down in the Big Apple. So I continue. Will, I will continue to support you and your brand, man. And for those that's watching, please do the same. And y'all know how we do it on the Finesse Media Podcast. Each and every week on the Finesse Media Podcast, we spotlight a new HBCU. And this week's HBCU is coming straight from that home state, Virginia. So shout out to Norfolk State University, the Mean Green Machine. They got a pretty dope band, too, by the way. But Mean Green, Norfolk State University, thank you so much for being our HBCU of the week. I know some good people feel he's a producer in the industry who comes out of that university. Uh, I don't think John Murray came from Norfolk, but I think he's from that area. But Norfolk State, you have produced. Went to Norfolk State. My uncle that passed away last year went to Norfolk State University. That's what I'm saying. Great people are made from that university. So thank you for continuing your excellence and all that you do for our community, Norfolk State University. And for those who are still interested in applying for the Finesse Media University Scholarship, the deadline is not until July the 1st. So make sure you get your applications in. You'll send a link to finessemediagroup at gmail.com. You'll send an email to finessemediagroup at gmail.com and make sure you put HBCU 2024 in the subject title and we'll respond with the link to the application on how to do that. We are giving away $1,000 scholarships uh, to three individuals that's going to an HBCU this fall of 2024. So if you or someone you know that's going to an HBCU this fall as a freshman, hit me up, group at gmail.com. Make sure you put HBCU in the subject title, HBCU 2024. Dag Monroe. Yes, sir. Rock, Listen, I'll say this. Take a little time to enjoy your view, man. <laughs> I, I listen all the time. I'm looking behind the scenes for the beauty, though. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. Thank you so much for watching the all Finesse right. Media Podcast Season 6. I'm your host, Ken Finesse Media, and I'll see you next week with something brand new. Peace. This has been another edition of the Finesse Media Podcast. Join us again next week for the latest news from HBCUs. Special guests.